Hello everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the show. I know it's been a while since we've done anything regularly here in the studio, and there is a reason for that. For those of you that don't know, Mac lives in a very old house, like over a hundred years old, and it doesn't have forced air. And where I shoot these videos, my studio, is in the upstairs of that house. So what I'm getting at is that during the hottest month of the year, it's very hot in here where I'm recording right now. So I don't spend a lot of time up here sometimes during July, but I do have a lot of stuff that I wanted to get out and I wanted to take a look at. And since Yojo June has come to an end, it's time to start looking at some other stuff that has been building up and has started to form a pile next to the table here. And one of those things is something that I am very excited about. It is the Mafex DC Batman uh, Night Crusader Batman action figure. And why I am excited about this is this is really like my version of Batman. I know I went on and on about the 89 Batman when I got the uh, McFarlane Batmobile, but this, the gray suit, the blue cow and cape, the yellow belt, the yellow symbol on the chest. This is really like the version of Batman that I grew up with. This is the version of Batman that I quietly hope DC will someday go back to, fully realizing that will never happen. But now I have it here in a Mafex figure, and I'm really happy about that. I'm really excited about that because this is going to be, as of right now, like one of the centerpiece figures of this one one twelfth scale um, DC line that I'm building out. I have the Mezco 112 Wonder Woman. Now I have a Mafex Batman in the style that I want. All I need now is a Superman, and I'll have the Trinity. But what we have here in the packaging is, let's be honest, the, the Medicom Mafex packaging is very basic. As a matter of fact, Robo always says that it has like a dollar store quality to it. And he's not wrong, to be completely honest. But I dig the crimson, like the coloring around the window. In the window, we can see the figure, we can see the heads, the hands, the few accessories that he comes with. You can see the scale, the scale. You can see the stand in back. Real nice promo shot down here on the corner. Um, real nice action pose of the Caped Crusader right there. It's number 215 in the line. We have a lot of promo shots across the back. Um, this is really cool right here, too. I forget what style, what image this came out of, what issues that came out of, but this whole thing, like, th this is just such a classic look for Batman, at least to me. Having grown up, started reading Batman in the 80s and the 90s, like, before, before Batman 89 took over and the suit went to all black, like, this was pretty much... Batman. Over here, Batman on the side. Nice, uh, ni another nice shot. That's classic, like, comic Batman logo on the bottom. Whole bunch of mumbo jumbo up top. The Bat logo. A little bit of window to let the light down inside. So you did not come here to see the packaging. You came to see what is inside the packaging. So without further ado, let's open this up and let's take a look at Medicom Mafex Batman Night Crusader. And if you want one of your own, you can get one at Entertainment Earth. Entertainment Earth is your one-stop shop for all toys, clothing, collectibles, and more. Get the newest from Hasbro, Mattel, Bandai, and Super 7, as well as exclusives that can't be found anywhere else. With over 25 years in the business, Entertainment Earth has what you want. Click the link in the description below. Okay, here he is, Bruce, out of the box, and putting the tape measure to him, we can see that he is roughly six and a half inches tall to the top of his cow right here. But we're going to take a look at one of the accessories early right now, because there is a second head sculpt that I want to show you. And it is this one right here with the greatly elongated bat ears on the cow. And putting the tape measure to him now, we can see that he's almost seven inches tall to the top of the cow right here. And it took a while to hit me that that picture that I saw or that we saw on the back of the box and these cow ears right here. At first, I thought that might have been something that harkened back to Batman year two. 
But the more that I thought about it, and actually, truthfully, the more I went back and I looked at, like, you know, Nightfall, on the covers of the Nightfall uh, comics, and even into Night's End, they often portrayed him with these elongated ears and the cape just draped over his arms. As a matter of fact, that image that was on the back of the Mayfex box that I was saying that looked really familiar, that was actually off of one of the Night's End comics after Bruce came back from having his back broken and he was squaring off against Azrael. So I think this is just this and the second cape, which we'll take a look at, I think is just supposed to be a nod to how they portrayed him a lot in the um, on the covers of the comics, not necessarily what was inside the books. So it should come as no surprise that there is a lot to this figure that I really like. There are a few things that are surprising about it, too, and some things that I don't want to say I don't like it right out of the bat, right off the bat, no pun intended, but there are some things that are kind of an annoyance. But first of all, let's just take a look at the figure as a whole, that I love this look. I said that at the beginning of the video when he was still in the box. I love this look for Batman. I love the gray, the blue, the bright yellow. I, to me, this is like the classic Batman. This is how I actually always picture him in my head. Like when somebody says Batman, this is usually the first thing that I see, the first look of his that I see, followed very closely by the 89 Batman where it's just all black with the yellow shield. The blues and the grays are fantastic. There is some shading on the grays to make the musculature stand out. There is some shading down here on the grays even to like make the calves and everything stand out and it is fantastic. The blues are a fantastic accent to this dark sort of like this dark like smoky like charcoal gray like this 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 Batman gray for lack of a better term. <laughs> and I really like the sculpted detail that they put because the, the trunks right here are just rubber. I like how they put these creases in there. Like, you know, it's just trunks that's being worn over the suit. And I wish there was a little bit more detail in the belt. Like, the yellow is almost too much yellow that washes it out. I wish there was like a wash over the belt, not necessarily to mute the yellow, but just to get things like the buckle to stand out a little bit better. Now the oval on his chest with the bat logo on there, I think looks great, but because he has like, you know, these big bat pecs, that the bat symbol sort of like sits there in the crevice. And sometimes depending on what angle you're looking at it, it's a little misshapen. But the classic bat oval with the bat in there, I think that looks great. Along with also just like the pure stark white of the eyes and this lantern jaw of his. Like this is DC classic. Like this is DC when like Batman wasn't wasn't the perfect I'm play I have everything planned. Like this was like the Caped Crusader, the world's greatest detective. This was just like a really great fun era of Batman. We even have the sculpting down here on the bottom of his boots because every time Batman was in flight or kicking somebody in the face, you always saw the treads on the boots. Now, one thing that I really dig is no surprise that the cape is wired right there. Like, check how well that holds. But there's also wires throughout the cape. Like, there's additional wired spines throughout the cape to like help hold it up in like funky poses. So since the the ends of the cape are, I don't want to say frayed, but they're looped in like this, like with these like, you know, bat drapes and they couldn't put a wire across the bottom of it, there are two wires mid cape to help it hold form whenever you're doing like big poses with the cape right there. <laughs> And I thought that was really cool. One thing that I was surprised at, during promotional shots, there were images of him without these peaked shoulders. Because especially during this Nightfall saga, they often painted him, painted him, drew him with these peaked shoulders right here. And when they showed him without the shoulders like this in the promo shots, I thought this piece, let's pop the head off, I thought this piece just came off and then the cape 
would stay on his shoulders. There's actually two separate cape pieces that we'll take a look at when we get to accessories, and that was a bit of a surprise as well. Now, one of the things that's frustrating to me is that the boots and the gloves right here are just painted lines. There's no sculpt work for the boots. It's just a flat leg piece with the boot painted on. I was really, I would have really liked for there have been a sculpt line right there for the boot and even a sculpt line right here for the gauntlets because as it is, this is just painted on as well. That's the frustrating part. The surprising part was the cape, what we just talked about. Um, but other than that, I think this looks really good. I also think they did a really good job of matching the blue from the cloth goods up to the plastic so that there's not a obvious contrast between the two different materials. Everything is so good. So now that I'm done gushing about how well it looks or how good it looks and how well the cape works and how much I like this, let's take a look at the articulation that the head will do a full 360 spin. He can look up very well, but you also see you get some gapping right there. He can look down very well. He has some real good, whoa, real good side-to-side -side head tilt. The arms will do a full 360 spin, but especially with this cape, because of the spiked shoulders, the arms do have to come out to get all the way around. You can see there is a very generous butterfly in there. The arms will come up past 90. He has a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows with some really good travel. Wrists swivel, or wrists hinge up and down. You can also do that omnidirectional thing so that they'll hinge in and out. All right, Bruce, let's get your arms out of the way. We have this ab cut right in here that he can do a full 360 there. He can crank back very, very well, but you'll also start to see that big gapping going on right there. He can come forward very well, and there's not nearly as much gapping there. He has some good side-to-side -side going on. He also has a ball joint at the waist, so the waist will do a full 360 spin. The waist will also crank back a little bit. The waist will crank forward a lot more than going back. And once again, there is some side-to-side, -side so that when you incorporate everything, you can really get some upper body movement out of Bruce right here on this figure. The legs will come forward. The legs will come forward to 90. If you turn them, you can even get them up higher than 90. Legs will come out to the side fairly well, just under 90. They'll go back. You can see there is a drop down hip right there. Okay, push that back up. There's no thigh cut, but it, and it does have that hidden hip joint in there, but you get a lot of travel out of that joint. A lot of times this doesn't give you nearly this much travel, but you get some real good rotation out of that. Double jointed knees, no boot cut, no boot swivel, but the ankles do swivel. Ankles will rock back, ankles will rock forward, you have a forward facing pin for some rocker, and you have toe articulation. Now, before we put this away and we start to take a look at the accessories, I just want to take one more look, let's get the cape out of the way, at the torso, at the body of Batman right here, and just take a look at the musculature that they carved into him, that they carved into him, that they sculpted into him, like even right in here, all of this muscle, like this is the comic come to life as far as I'm concerned. This is how they drew him, larger than life, in, you know, the Caped Crusader of Gotham City. This whole thing looks so good. And it shouldn't surprise me because, like, it's Mayfex. You get what you pay for. Like, that's why you pay for the premium price. So you get this great detail, these great paint apps, and this fantastic articulation. Articulation and joints that don't really do you any favors when you're trying to get him into a neutral pose. But, man, when we pose him up into some action poses, he looks fantastic. So one thing I almost forgot to talk about before we moved on is the shoulder spikes, the cow spikes, and even the gauntlet spikes right here, that these are all a soft rubber. They will bend, but they won't break. 
and they're not sharp. So you don't have to worry about those snapping. These shoulder pieces are a soft rubber as well. A little bit more solid when you get to the base right here, but once again, they will bend before they break. And of course, the cowl ears as well, including this big headpiece, which we'll be taking a look at in a few minutes. So right out of the box, Bruce comes with a pair of clenched fists. He comes with a pair of open hands. He comes with a pair of wide open hands. He comes with a pair of flat hands that can be used for swimming or striking. He comes with what at first glance looks to be another pair of fists, but you can see there's a little bit of a gap in there, a little bit of a hole, that these are actually the hands that are used to clutch the rope, the rope, of his Batarang, and we will take a look at that when we look at the accessories. And then he has these hands right here that almost look like trigger hands, but these are for holding the Batarang. So Bruce comes with a few different head sculpts as well, one of them you've been looking at for the majority of this video. And then the other one is this one that just looks psychotic. That gritted teeth growl, these overextended, these over-exaggerated ears for the cow. This look was used so many times on the covers of Nightfall and Night's End. Just very dramatic, very overly exaggerated proportions, a whole lot of cape, a whole lot of cow, just really emphasizing like this bestial like bat visage that he had during this whole run. And this is a really cool addition to it, especially this grimace right here. Like this grimace, these tall ears, like this is right off that one cover of Night's End that I was talking about. And then last but not least, we do have this head sculpt with the, you know, bat rebreather right here that he fit this on his utility belt and we were supposed to believe that there was a uh, supply of oxygen in there that could last him for a while. I don't remember how often he used this or for how long that he used this, but it was just one of those cool little gadgets that, like, Batman always had. Now, the cape does come off, and we'll be taking a look at that uh, in a few seconds, because there is a very specific look for him with this head sculpt on, and we'll be taking a look at this again. Okay, so I had mentioned that there were different looks for the cape, that you could take these shoulders off, and these pointed shoulders, and just have the cape laying draped across his shoulders. Now, to take this off, like I said, I thought this was just going to be a shoulder piece that lifted off, but it's actually the entire cape that comes off. But the first thing you have to do is pop the head off, and then you just pull on the front of the cowling, and you can see there's a peg, a slot and peg up front, and then it just lifts off. You can see there are two pegs at the back of the cowl, and you can see the one main peg up front, and then two sockets for the smaller pegs at the back. Very much got an earthworm gym thing going on right here, but you can see that there's also that bent dumbbell, which gives him that really good neck articulation. Okay. You see the neck piece hinges, and then you have that dumbbell joint in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the other cape, and first, we slide it down over the neck piece. Those two pegs nestle into the holes first. And then the front peg just pops right in there. It's a very tight fit. And then we just pop the head back on. And there we have Batman with just the cape draped over his shoulders. Now, the thing that I like about this is that, once again, in the promotional shots, I don't remember there being a second plastic collar right here. I just remember seeing the cape just draped over the shoulders, and that gave it like not a very dynamic look. It gave it sort of like a sloppy finish. I'm glad that I was mistaken and that there is still a shoulder piece, a chest piece right here to give it that finished look. He just doesn't have the big spiky shoulders that the more I look at this, this is actually like really cool looking too. I still think I like the spiked shoulders, but I'm liking this more than I thought I was going to. Now there's one more piece to take a look at, and let me grab that. And that is this small piece right here. So what we do next is, once again, we pop the head off. We take the cape off, just like we did the last time. Where'd that piece go? We bring this piece in, and then that just fits on there like that. And then it plugs in like that. And then that is for this head sculpt right here. So we can put him into 
swimming poses without the cape weighing him down. You also get a really good look. Look at the muscle work in his back. Holy Hulk. Look at that. That might be a little over-exaggerated, boys. Uh, <laughs> but I appreciate the detail, the attention to detail right there. But holy cow. Bane broke that? Wow. Okay. <laughs> but here we go. No cape. A clean look for those diving poses that we can get him in with the respirator on there. So I thought that was a really cool touch that they gave you this as well for the no cape option. So the only true accessory that he comes with is this batarang on a rope. And if you listen to me and Uncle Britt on the Ralph World podcast, shameless plug right there, you may remember me telling him that the grappling hook, the gas-powered grappling hook for Batman is a relatively new concept that came out of the 89 movie. That before that, he had a batarang on a rope that he threw. So he doesn't get a grappling gun. This is the batarang and rope that he would throw, hook around like flagpoles, around gargoyles, around whatever he could, and swing on it that way. And one thing, first of all, the batarang is really nice. I like the bright silver to it. I think it looks good. It is very reminiscent of that time. You have a little bit of swivel on the end of the on the tip right there, although I am concerned that if you twist it too much, it might break. But one th thing that really took me by surprise, this whole coil is one long wire. And I wasn't expecting that, that this is all a wire so that you can pose it in Batman's hand however you want to. And that is pretty freaking awesome. Now, we're going to show you what those different hands were for right now. That I got Bruce right here, and he has the two different hands. That this is sort of like that semi-trigger hand, but you can see that the batarang conforms perfectly into that grip right there. And also, we have this hand that I said sort of looked like a second clenched fist, but you can see that there's a little bit of an opening in there. And that is for, you take this wire that is the bat rope, you slip it behind his thumb. Whoop, the hand came off. You slip it behind his thumb, like so, in that groove that's in the fist. Let's put it back on. And then he's just holding it. So you can move it up and down through his fist. He can have his much of a grip or as short of a grip on it as you want him to have. And we'll see how that looks with photos at the end of the video. But I think they do a really good jo job of giving him enough hands, the hands that he needs, to be able to handle this thin wire for a rope, but at the same time being able to grip the batarang up top. And now for size comparison, here he is beside the Mezco 112 Wonder Woman and the Mafex Cyborg Superman and man, seeing these two next to each other, that really takes me back to like those old comic days. Here he is beside the DC Direct Cheetah and the DC Icons Dead Man. Here he is beside Loose Collector Rocketeer and the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Vampirella. Here he is beside Mezco 112 Collection The Shadow and Eric Draven The Crow. Here he is beside Hasbro Marvel Legends World War II Captain America from the Riders series and Daredevil Elektra. Here he is with Lanyard Toys, City Hunter Predator, and Xenomorph Drone, because he has fought both. Here he is with NECA Toys, War Duke, and Grimsword. And finally, here he is with Airborne and Me from the G.I. Joe Steel Core. And one last look, here he is next to the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse 1989 Batmobile. And I gotta admit, he sizes up pretty good next to this thing. I actually have a Batman the Animated Series Batmobile on pre-order from Target, and that is scaled for 112 figures, and it's supposed to be able to hold two 6-inch figures in it. I'm very curious now to see how that's going to look with this Batman right here, um, because this looks cool, and now I can't wait to see how the Animated Series Batmobile looks next to him. Now it also makes me kind of want to pick up the Batman 66 Batmobile as well. I am so excited to have this figure, like, I can't even begin to tell you. Not only is it my favorite Batman, 
but it is a fun Batman. The sculpt, the paint apps, the articulation, the posability, the look of him, that cape. Oh, that cape. That cape is fantastic in its own right with the amount of looks you can get out of it, the amount of posability you can get out of it. It looks heavy. It looks like real material, but it poses so well with those four wires that are in the cape. In both of them, actually. The cape was as much fun to play around with as the figure was. And now, we know Mafex has some really good articulation on their figures, but of the limited um, collection of Mafex that I have, being Cyborg Superman, um, Golden Armor Wonder Woman from 84, and Psylocke, Marvel Psylocke, this one is the the, the one that has been the most fun for me to play around with, the most fun to pose. Uh, it, it just has, like, fluid articulation that the figure wants to be posed in these dramatic action shots, and it's so much fun to play around with. You couple that with the fact that this is my personal favorite version of Batman from the Nightfall era, from the late 80s, early 90s, very early 90s, but like the eight through the 80s into the early 90s, this is my Batman, and I couldn't ask for a better figure to use in the um, 112th scale collection that I'm building. This is, this is my shelf Batman. Like, I was thinking about getting the Mafex Dark Knight Returns Batman. Don't really know if I'm going to be doing that now because I don't feel like I really need it. Like, the only reason I might get that two-pack now is because of Robin. I do need a Robin with this, and I really... Man, I can't remember if they're making a if they make a Nightfall Tim Drake Robin for this set or not. I got to go back and take a look at that. And if they do, you better believe that's the second one. That's the next figure I'm getting. Also, I'm, I'm definitely getting Bane now as well. As far as the issues go, and I'll, I'll I'll admit I'm really stretching here to find like fault with this figure. I don't like the painted boots and the painted gloves. I do wish there was a little bit of a sculpt there. I do wish there was a raise like in the sculpt where the boots are and where the gauntlets are, just so that there would be some separation and it wouldn't just be like smooth skin, here's a painted on boot, here's a painted on gauntlet. Also, I do wish he came with a few more accessories. I appreciate the Batarang that's on the rope because like I said, this was before the grapple gun era, but having just like a couple of loose Batarangs for him to throw, or maybe like how sometimes they do that um, effect where, like, you know, they put the hand on, like Snake Eyes throwing the uh, shuriken or something like that, where they would have just had a hand with him throwing out a few batarangs. That would have been a really cool accessory to have. I do like the additional head sculpts. I really like that tall-eared Batman, that tall-eared cow look. The only other thing maybe with that that would have been cool is if between those two... Um, head sculpts that the face plates would have been able to be swapped out so that you could have a neutral face with the short-eared cow and a neutral face with the tall-eared cow or like you know the the gritted teeth angry face and you could swap those onto either one of them that would have been really cool to do as well so now i have my favorite batman with my favorite batmobile and the fact that the two of them scale pretty well is really cool too now i'm really looking forward to getting that Batman the Animated Series Batmobile that's supposedly designed for six inch figures and just seeing now how well the uh, how well this Batman is going to fit into that Batmobile. And there's a thought, I could get the Animated Series Robin to go along with him maybe. I might look into that as well. Hello, before you click away, please remember to do all the YouTube things, like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you already did subscribe, big thanks to you. If you like the show and you want to help the channel grow, please be consider becoming a YouTube member or a monthly coffee subscriber, where for $1 a month, you can get access to member benefits, such as the monthly members exclusive video. This month, it is the Fig Zero 1 6 scale Cobra Commander. So until next time, my friends, play well, stay safe, Stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.